Hi, this is Stefan from the Media Computing Group at RWTH Aachen University. In this video I would like to show you how to develop multi-touch applications for macOS 10 with our Coco multi-touch framework. Let's start by downloading the resources we need to receive multi-touch events in our applications. Since we are currently running a closed beta, don't be confused if you are not able to download the files from our website. The installation is quite easy, open the package and follow the instructions. Before we start developing a small demo application, I would like to show you which resources were added to your hard disk. There are three components, a preference pane, a background agent and the actual Coco framework. So when you open the system preference application, you will see a new item labeled multi-touch. This preference pane is the front end for the background agent. You use it to enable or disable the multi-touch event processing and to configure the different input modules. In addition, you also got a status bar menu which lets you enable or disable individual modules or event processing at all. So for now, we just enable event processing and quit the system preference application. The multi-touch agent is now running in the background. The third component is the Coco framework, which is located at slash library slash frameworks. Since the background agent is now running, we can start developing a demo multi-touch application. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to enable multi-touch in our standard mouse event based Coco application. So we add the multi-touch framework to the project. Next open the info.plist file and change the principal class attribute from NS application to MT application. When we now run the application, it will receive multi-touch events. Before we now add a custom view that will render busy parts of the touches, I will show you the content of the multi-touch framework. MT application is a subclass of NS application and does all application based multi touch processing for you. There are no public methods and just one instance variable that holds a reference to the current multi touch event. But you usually don't have to deal with this class in your code. When you create a custom view that should receive multi touch events, you import the multi touch.h file. This file imports all other header files. We decided not to subclass any possible Coco class, but provide a protocol that you may implement in the NSView subclass, for example. I will explain the function of the individual methods later. When the first object touches a multi-touch surface, a new empty event is created. A multi-touch event consists of a timestamp and a set of touch objects. It is updated any time a new object touches the surface, is moved or leaves the surface. When the last object leaves the multi-touch surface, the empty event is released. The empty event class provides one read-only property and three methods to get the touch objects, whereas two of them are just convenience methods. Each touch object is an instance of empty touch. 
This class provides several read-only properties and two methods to get the current and previous location of the touch. Like the empty event class, a touch object is created once an object touches the surface and is then updated each time the object is moved. It's finally released when the object leaves the surface. The first property identifies the type of the object. Currently we just have one type, but in the future we will add support for other types like fiducious as well. Each touch object has of course a timestamp. Since the object is updated during its lifetime, you can check its current status via the touch face property. When an object touches and leaves the surface in a small amount of time, it is recognized as a tap and the tap count value is incremented by 1. Since each touch object occurs at a specific view on a specific window, we also have properties for them. The last property is a dictionary containing type specific data. Ok, that's it for the Coco framework. We will have a documentation for the framework later if you want to read a more de detailed description of the individual classes and its methods. As I said before, we will now create a custom view that will draw a BSA path for each touch that occurs. So I create a NSU subclass and implement the empty touching protocol. You can use the isTouchEnabled method to enable or disable multi-touching for this view. But since we want to receive events, we just return yes. If multi-touching is enabled for the view, you can decide if you want to receive multiple touches or just the first touch that occurred. We return yes because we want to get all touches. There are now five methods left that look almost the same. Each method is called according to the touch phase of all current touch objects. The implementation of the five methods is straightforward and it's just standard Coco code. When a new object touches the surface, a new busy path is created. When the object is moved, a new line is drawn and when the object leaves the surface, the busy path is released. When a tap occurred, a red angle is drawn inside the view for some milliseconds.